go drunks at Rockstone Fish Festival. Hero grandfather saves grandchildren from burning house. Armed bandits invade Mill Road Penitent's home, cart offered cash and jewelry. And Jack Day convinced budget 2018 will be replete with taxes. Those were the top headlines for the week ending November 3. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Good afternoon. Starting things off on news updates we can review, we tell you that a birthday celebration turned deadly for a 13-year-old. The teen was accompanied by family members to the annual Rockstone Fish Festival hosted in Linden. Find out more in this report. That is 13-year-old Yasha Prince of Bagotstong East Bank Demarara. Reports are that the teenager was accompanied by family members to the Rockstone Fish Festival to celebrate her 13th birthday. The Ghana Tourism Authority in a statement said, while at the annual fish festival, the teenager was among a group of persons that boarded a vessel to transport them to the Golden Beach. The GTA noted that the beach is a couple minutes away from the main event area where persons go to swim. It was during the outing, Prince and two other relatives experienced difficulty in navigating through the deep waters. The GTA said Prince went under the water but was subsequently pulled out. However, resuscitation efforts were made by the medical services, but that were in vain. Gavin Moses, another person who went under the water, has not been found. The Guyana Tourism Authority said, safety and security of visitors, both local and international, remains a top priority. As a result of the tragedy, Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin and the GTA will be meeting with the Rockstone Planning Committee to address the circumstances under which the incident occurred. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Head of State David Granger says the coalition has managed the economy sensibly over the past 30 months. That was a trust of his message when he addressed the members of Parliament at the 11th Parliament reconvenes. Nikhil John, do has more. President David Granger told the members of Parliament that as elected representatives, they should be informed of the state of the nation and of the economic and legislative agenda for the new financial year and the future. The head of state said in May 2015, a multi-party coalition assumed office and ushered in an opportunity for consensus-based politics. This form of government wrested the nation from the vice of divisive and destructive winner takes all politics. <laughs> and laid the basis for a system of inclusionary democracy. which is the form of governance prescribed by the Constitution at Article 13. This is the form that seeks cooperation for the common good, rather than one that fosters confrontation and chaos. President Granger updated the House on the various diplomatic initiatives the government has been undertaken to address the ongoing border dispute between Venezuela and Guyana. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has met the United Nations Secretary General's personal representative on several occasions. We are engaged at present in a renewed good officers process. We are confident that the common commitment of the government and opposition will eventuate in strong national support for a juridical settlement of this controversy, a controversy which has impaired the development of our nation. The head of state noted that the country is moving ahead rapidly with the green development agenda. He emphasized the need for Guyana to develop new strategies and laying optional plans for the petroleum industry. Including the establishment of the Sovereign Wealth Fund. We have tabled the Petroleum Commission of Guyana Bill. The Ministry of Natural Resources is preparing a suite of other legislation and regulations to support the development of the incipient petroleum industry. Consultations will continue on these draft documents, including the Petroleum Act, Environmental and Occupational Health and Safety Regulations and Local Content Policy. 
With regards to the economy, President Granger declared that it has been prudently managed over the last 30 months. He noted that the economy grew by 3.1% in 2015 and 3.3% in 2016. Despite the unfavorable and external environment, gold was a major contributor to this growth with 712,707 ounces being produced last year, the highest in the country's history. Economic growth would not have been possible without the achievement of macroeconomic stability. The Ministry of Finance has acted to create a favorable environment for business development, to protect investment, to moderate inflation, and to maintain a stable exchange rate. The head of state also updated the members of parliament of the passage of the Telecommunications Amendment Act, the reforming of the security sector, and the rehabilitation of the hinterland airstrips. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Members of the parliamentary opposition did not walk out of the parliamentary chamber as they customary do whenever President Dave Granger gives an address. However, they decided to hold a protest inside the chamber revealing their placards as the president arrived. Here's more. Well, first of all, I don't know if this is the norm that goes on. Uh, and um, worse than this goes on in the British Parliament, you know, I've seen uh, members take off the shoe and bang the desk and all of that. But I, I'm hoping that some degree of civility emerges. Otherwise, the business of the country can't go on properly. That was Chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission, retired Justice James Patterson, reacting to the opposition's condemnation of his position. This follows the opposition's heckling in condemnation of the unilateral appointment of Patterson during the President's address to the Parliament. However, Patterson said he has been settling very well at his office, which comprises of a good theme. He also pointed out that he has been doing lots of reading to become acquainted with his position in office. Remarking on his election, Patterson believes the head of state was properly advised before his unilateral appointment. Patterson also believes heckling has become a norm in the National Assembly. Retired Justice James Patterson was unilaterally appointed by the President to serve as Chairman of GCOM on October 19. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Scores are out in front of Parliament building before the 71st sitting commence, protesting the decision of the head of state to appoint retired Justice James Patterson as a new chairperson of the Guyana Elections Commission. The group was urged on by parliamentarians of the People's Progressive Party. Godfrey Brooms was there and filed this report. Protesters representing the People's Progressive Party as amassed in their numbers in front of Parliament as they protested the decision made by President David Granger to unilaterally appoint the Justice James Patterson as the chairman of the Guyana Elections Commission. They are claiming that the President himself is not fit and proper. The protesters all agree that the stance the head of state took was distasteful. They are calling for the decision President David Granger made to appoint a retired Justice James Patterson to be annulled. Can you tell me why you were protesting out here? Because Jicom. The 84 year old man they put there. That's why we are picketing here today. And you are against the 84 year old man being as the chairman? No, no way. I am not agreeing with that. He's too old. He is too old. And that is the only reason you see him as on here? Yes, he is too old. They, they get somebody younger. We don't satisfy with the pick. My grandchild make with the GCOM chairman. We totally dissatisfied with it. President David Granger unilaterally appointed Justice Patterson to chair GCOM on the evening of October 19. This decision was taken after the three separate lists the opposition leader Barrett Jaglio gave the president was deemed unacceptable. According to the president, it was not his initial intention to unilaterally appoint someone. An injunction has since been filed in the High Court to annul the decision. Reporting from the protest in front of Parliament for MTV News Update, Godfrey Brooms. 
It has been recommended that the Commissioner of Police, Silal Prasad, be made to resign, and if he wishes not to, he should be removed by invoking Article 25 of the Constitution. This recommendation came from the Commissioner Inquiry Report into the alleged plot to assassinate the President. Here's Ashan Gomes, Cornelius. The COI report in detail clearly states that the police commissioner Silal Prasad should be made to resign from his post. If he fails to do so, it has been recommended that Article 225 should be invoked to have him removed from office. Article 225 speaks to the removal of officers due to physical or mental infirmity or misbehavior. The report stated based on their observation, Commissioner Prasad acted improperly when he instructed Inspector a right to place Nizam Khan on bail. It claimed that the commissioner's action in bypassing the chain of command and the instruction given is unacceptable. Additionally, the commission recommends that Commissioner C. Lal be investigated for perjury in relation to his statement that he was not told of the allegation until about 16 hours on March 29, 2017. As regard Assistant Commissioner of Police David Ramnarine, who acted as Commissioner of Police on March 29, 2017, the report said while Ramnarine testified that the investigation was not properly conducted, he did nothing to ensure that a proper investigation was done. In relation to Assistant Police Commissioner Clifton Hicken, the report recommends that he be sanctioned for neglecting his duties. The Commission also recommends that Senior Superintendent Wendell Blanham be disciplined for his role in improperly supervising the investigation, even though he was instructed by the Acting Commissioner to personally do so. Both Superintendent Vishidas and Superintendent Mitchell Caesar, according to the Commission's report, should be disciplined accordingly for failing to both properly document the correct date the allegation was made and effectively supervise the investigation. The Commission was established to inquire into persons, places, time, circumstances and events by and through which allegations and reports came to be made of a plan to assassinate the President of Guyana. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lushona Gomes, Cornelius. Following the tragedy at the 12th annual Rockstone Fish Festival, the Guyana Tourism Authority bemoans the deaths. The GTA promises stricter monitoring at future events. According to Logistics Officer of the Guyana Tourism Authority, Carla Chandra, the incident, which is an unfortunate one, would not have happened if all the precautionary security measures put in place were fully upheld by all. Chandra clarified that the incident occurred sometime between 15 to 16.30 hours. The official tours were actually called off. Uh, the time these persons ventured out, and apparently they hired a private boat to take them over to the Golden Beach, which is actually not very far from the site. Um, and apparently they um, indulged in some swimming there. They asked the boat that they hired to just drop them off and to come back to pick them up. Yeah, but from what I, um, from um, sources, because I had staff on the ground um, as well, and we took up some media too. I think because everyone was paying attention to the judging, <coughs> it started around three. <coughs> and at least uh, the family had the boat within that time and went over. But by the time they learned of what was happening, it was around four thirty. So the actual time of the incident, mm -hmm. we can't put a <coughs> put a hand on it um, per se to say exactly when it happened. But it did happen. I would say between. To Further, Chandra pointed out that the incident happened away from the watchful eyes of the security personnel on Rockstone's mainland. She noted the individuals were able to hire a private boat to go swimming without life jackets. Due to this tragedy, the Guyana Tourism Authority will be putting stricter security methods in place for future fish festivals. Um, well, firstly, I would um, say that we're... Um, really uh, regret um, the incident. It's really an unfortunate one regarding the death of two persons. Um, safety and security um, of visitors is always a top priority for us. Um, and we will work uh, with the organizing committee to ensure that systems are put in place to avoid a recurrence of this incident. Um, I would say other than this though, the events have improved 
13-year-old Yasha Prince, together with her uncle, 50-year-old Gavin Morris, and other family members were celebrating each other's birth anniversaries when they decided to take a swim at Golden Beach on October 29. After Prince displayed difficulty navigating in the strong currents of the water, her uncle tried to rescue her but encountered difficulties himself before he disappeared under the water. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. As the presentation of annual budget 2018 is less than a month away, the University of Guyana will be looking forward for a robust investment from the Granger led administration. Here's more. While the University of Guyana was unable to engage the Ministry of Finance on budget 2018, a proposal was submitted to the finance body. Vice-Chancellor of the University of Guyana, Professor Ivlo Griffith, said the failure to engage the Finance Ministry stemmed from administrative changes. He made reference to the split of the Ministry of Education from the Department of Culture, Youth and Sport. Yes and no. Yes in the sense that we submitted the, our budget request but the initial, like every other unit that gets funding, there is a hearing. Our hearing date was rescheduled, and as of today, we have not had the reestablishment of the date for the hearing. I'm hoping that sometime soon. Professor Griffith said an increase in staff salaries and enhanced infrastructures are among the requests put forward by the university. Well, we're looking for a very robust investment from the government. You know, the reality is that this university has been neglected for a long time and we cannot build quality in the cheap. And so I've been asking the government, I know that whatever I ask for, I'm not going to get. But I'm making a substantial invest, request for an investment in facilities. I'm making a substantial request for an investment in security of this campus. Do you know that this university doesn't have a perimeter park fence? Security at the campus has also been pointed out as a major issue of concern. Griffith asserted a combination of checkpoint safety, fencing and technology will create a more security conscious campus. Annual budget 2018 will be read in the National Assembly on November 27 by Minister Finance Winston Jordan. This will be the fourth budget presented by the coalition government. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. A hero grandfather braved the flames of his burning house to save his grandchildren from perishing in the inferno. That fire completely destroyed a two-story house and has left the family of seven to stay in two vehicles. Nekal Jonu spoke with the man. Lyndon Fields is contemplating his next move following the complete destruction of his house. The fire destroyed the Samata Point house in the wee hours of Sunday morning. Fields explained that the fire may have started in the bottom flat of the two-story house. He added that his grandchildren were in the bottom flat. I, I hear the door bramming and I tell, ask, tell them why they don't fly the lock. And they said the lock fly, but they ain't, you know, when I am um, checked, the latch was on, but I was so confused. I run wrong and I kick open this front door. And I go in and I got a daily rescue go on a two-year-old that now was on the net in the net and they now start to catch. If you notice that I got some born there all in my hands. And then the other, the other three they were crump up at the door. So I tell her I had to run in back and pick up another one and tell the two big size one to run out. He further added that he attempted to save some of his belongings However, the flames was too intense. According to Fields, when the fire engines arrived to douse the flames, they had to resort to a nearby trench for water. When the first fire will come there, then they realize they ain't got water. They call the second fire wheel. When they come and uh, that halfway they start out in water finishes, lucky thing these two trenches in the fall, they start to use bucket. And I know if I wasn't at home, they would have found roast meat in the house. And I went to a wedding, you know, but I didn't spend more than half an hour because I tell the guy, man, look, I got to go to church. And he say, man, and when he turn and go inside, I get away. So that is why I say God is, I still give thanks and praise to God because 
material things is just material things, but life, life, life what save. Since the fire on Sunday morning, the family is staying in a car and a minibus. They are asking persons to assist the family in whatever way possible. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. A middle road, the penitent's family is now traumatized after two men forced their way into their home, carting off with numerous items. The bandits also assaulted the family. Here's more from Kippany Jordan. Seema Parman and her family were robbed of their valuables around 5 hours 30 this morning. During an interview with this newscast, Seema mentioned that she, along with her husband, was preparing to sell at the market. However, their plans were cut short as two men of African descent pounced on them. The woman's husband was beaten unconsciously by one of the bandits. The ordeal lasted for approximately an hour and a half. They take my husband, knock you out, beat you up, and they take his money that he's going to pay people with from his pocket. They said they're looking for money. They open the door, looking for money in jewelry. My son had on a silver chain, they carry it, they tumble up, they find little money that we, we save in the house. Some um, $50 bills, they carry some cigarettes, buy some goods, they carry some perfume and phone and my son, a tablet and son, his laptop. They carry away those things and they cough me up and beat me up and carry away the monitor. They put all in our vehicle and carry it away. She recounted that both men had guns. After ransacking the house, the men left with cash, goods, a silver chain, a tablet, cell phones, and a DVR that could have possibly revealed the bandit's identity. They also drove away in the family's black Toyota Tundra bearing license plate number GNN9686. Two. Two bandits. Yes. There's African descent and they are, um, one is tall and one is short. One but, one but nearly six. One, one but six, six something. And I ain't see the face. She further went on to say that a relative tried to pursue the men but was unable to continue as they hastily sped away and the trail got cold. Kip and Adrian reporting for MTV's News Update. We tell you now that Justice Gina Prasad has denied attorney Sanjeev Dattin's application to withdraw the murder charge against Marcus Bisram. The attorney was also ordered to pay the respondents $250,000 for wasting the court's time. Nika Jondu tells us more. High Court Judge Gina Prasad has struck out the application filed by attorney Sanjeev Dattadin, who is representing murder accused Marcus Bisram. Justice Prasad, in handing down the decision, ordered attorney Dattadin to pay the respondents a sum of $250,000 for wasting the court's time. Justice Prasad added that the matter was treated with urgency based on the nature of the offense and how it was turning out from the onset. He stated that that didn't file the application to withdraw the Director of Public Prosecution's advice to charge Bisram for murder. However, even after the application was filed, that didn't did not reveal to the court that another application was filed back in December 2016 to quash the search of Bisram's quarantine home. That advice was again based on the decision of the DPP. Justice Prasad told the attorney that the applicants who approached the court need to come with clean hands. However, Datadin stated that the only witness has recanted his evidence. He says he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know to read and write, and therefore he didn't know what was in the statement. When he didn't know what was in the statement, he said, that's what he explained. He said he didn't know what was in the statement. He had no way to verify it. His mother, re, re, unfortunately, is unable to, to assist him because of the inability to read as well. So he recanted his story. When he recanted his story, we filed an application to say that the DPP could not have a reasonable prospect of success any longer. There being no reasonable prospect of success, that was what this case was about. One simple issue. Family members of Narendat were also present in court to hear what decision would be taken against the murder accused. The family said they are pleased with the outcome of the matter and are hopeful that justice will be served. Yes, we have injustice. We get injustice in this matter. They let the court, they let the law take its course 
And we look at answer. We pleased so, so far with what we go in and go about. What about the previous magistrate where he took sixty thousand dollars? What about the the, the other prosecutor where he took twenty twenty million dollars? Between the, the prosecutor and the magistrate is six eighty million dollars. Nobody, anybody is a fool. Nobody is not no fool in this country. Nobody is no fool in this country. Nobody is no fool in this country. This country got to come straight. You have to straighten this country under this government. And I call on the president to see, let this country run, and uh, let the justice system be a fair to people. Because we don't have it in the previous government. Anytime PP was in power, this Marcus Bishan will never be charged for murder. And the, the, the five complaints to them. He feel he have money, he can do anything in this world. But we have the Almighty with me. Narindat was murdered and subsequently dumped on the number 71 village public road, Quarantine Burbies. The incident took place almost one year ago when Bistram was holding a farewell party for members of a community policing group. According to reports, Bistram made sexual advances on Narindat, who refused his offer. It is alleged that Bistram instructed his bodyguards to deal with Narindat. The murder accused is set to be extradited to Ghana in weeks to face the charge. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. In another heartbreaking story, family members of Quinton Hackett Courtney are losing hope after the lad vanished without a trace more than a year ago. His family is pleading for his safe return. Here are the details. A Wales family on the west bank of Demerara continues to grieve as the search for their relative continues. According to his mother, Sherry and Hardy, the young man disappeared without a trace last July. The 21-year-old left one morning to work at a farm behind the Wales estate but never returned home. While the mother indicated there has been no arguments at home, she said the family has often advised him to stay off the road since the young man had a few brushes with the law. I want to tell him when he come home because mommy love him, my grandmother wants to see him, everybody wants to see him. His sister asks him for him every day. <laughs> How many siblings he have? He have two brothers and one and two sisters. The distraught mother, who could not say what occurred, is pleading with her son to return home soonest as his family is grieving. I just want anybody, if anybody know my son wears about or know anything that happened, then they just come forward and let me know so that I could feel much comfortable because it's a year and I'm still feeling it because it's my eldest child. A missing persons report has been made to the Wales Police Station. Anyone with information that may lead to the discovery of Quinton Hackett Courtney is asked to contact the nearest police station. The opposition party was ready to submit a fourth list of nominees for the selection of a chairman for JCAM, given that the president stands with the Chief Justice interpretation. However, the president did not allow this process to continue. Here's more. The unilateral selection of a chairman for the Guyana Elections Commission has denounced the 25 years of a common understanding of the Carter formula, according to opposition leader Barra Jaglio. According to him, the president continues to renounce history as a sole arbitrator of the law. Jaglio stressed that a chairman has always been selected from the list submitted by an opposition leader. All the parties subscribe to this formula. They acted in accordance with the formula and that at no time in the over 25 years of our recent history has a president acted and named a person, a chairman of GCOM, outside of a list that the leader of the opposition had submitted. He also lambasted the administration for allegedly playing the race card to induce ethnic polarization. Jack De predicts an economic recession as he alleges that democracy is being eroded. The opposition leader also questioned the head of state's integrity. And the chair that, that is law now, which said he would have had to give reasons for rejecting the names on the list. And then the Chief Justice said that even if you find five of the names, well, not she didn't say that, but any name on the list or any quantum of name on the list unacceptable, that does not render the entire list as unacceptable. Because if you find one, you have to choose. So once he had complied with that, 
then I would have probably submit, would have submitted a fourth list. Justice James Patterson has been unilaterally selected by the head of state to chair GCOM. His appointment became effective on October 20. The decision has brought tremendous backlash from civil society and the business community. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Acting top cop David Ramnarine is urging the two remaining prison escapees to surrender themselves to law enforcement. One of the fugitives escaped from the Cam Street prison on July 9, while the other escaped from the Luzaknam holding facility on July 24. Here's more from Nikhil Jondu. Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarine is urging family members to provide information on the whereabouts of the two remaining prison escapees, those still at large are Paul Goraya and Kubina Stevens. Goraya escaped from the Lusignan walled area where the Cam Street prisoners were kept following the fire. Stevens escaped from Cam Street prison subsequent to the burning down of that jail. While we want to encourage, I want to take this opportunity to encourage your relatives and friends who may know where they are or have some idea where they are because we believe there might be some communication. It's just that we're not getting that kind of information and our searches are not coming up fruitful, to encourage them to come in. The acting top cop said the mission of recapturing all the escapees is not completed. He noted during the past weeks, the force would have responded to bits and pieces of intelligence. However, the searches which were conducted have been inconclusive. And uh, we have another strategy that we've, um, what you call, um, put in place to gather some more information and we, so we work, with that, we, we work in that strategy and hope we get some results. The Commissioner of Police noted that the force respects human rights laws. He concluded with the case of Royden Williams, who the force claimed was dangerous while on the run, was recaptured and placed back in custody in a civilized manner. So they shouldn't have any fear at all that, that they would surrender and, and, and something um, unprofessional might happen. That is just not going to happen. This is a, a modern time where um, policemen are very careful, very concerned, very keen on respecting human rights. There may be little issues here and there with some unprofessional behavior, but that doesn't take away from the big picture that we are very keen on exercising and respecting rights of prisoners, rights of suspects, rights of citizens who make reports and ensure that they are due process and whatever it is and so on. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Opposition leader Bharat Jagdeo has lambasted Minister Finance for telling a nation that there will be no new tax measures in the national budget. The budget will be presented to the National Assembly and the nation at the end of the month. Here again is Nikhil Jondu. Opposition leader Bar Jagdeo said Minister of Finance Winston Jordan should receive an award for exempting new taxes from the 2018 budget. The opposition leader cited many examples where the tax measures in the 2017 budget is affecting miners and forestry producers in the extractive industry. The miners pre-2015 in the PPP era didn't have to pay the VAT on their machinery and equipment. They now have to pay it. The miners had a 10% triple test tax, now that has gone to 20%. That's a 100% increase. The miners had a 2% final tax on income tax. Now they have to pay. That's an advance towards the prevailing income tax rate of 40%. They now have to pay $2,500 to sell an ounce of gold when they had they didn't have to pay that before. And if the miners don't keep records, they pass the law, the GRA could charge them, they could go to jail for six months. So let Jordan look at the miners in their faces and tell them there will be no new taxes in the past three budgets. Jagdia said Minister Jordan should also speak to the rice farmers in Region 5 who have to pay a higher rental rate for different services provided by the Mahaika Maikoni Abari Agriculture Development Authority. He noted that the 2018 budget seeks to put added pressure on the smaller man 
give the minuscule salary increase for public servants. Let him look at the people who are building homes in Guyana uh, in their faces and say, you have no taxes, but now you have to pay a VAT on all building material, including sand, stone, cement, etc. Look at the, the education sector. Look at the people who go into the, market, the, the pharmacy to buy drugs now. They have to pay 14% more on their, on their pharmaceuticals. And, and when you travel to certain interior locations, your ticket price and the freight is gone up by 14%. There's just a couple of the taxes. I can go through many, many others. Many, many others. People who had to pay $12,000 to vend now with a little vehicle now have to pay six to $5,000 a year. From 12000 to six to five. Let me tell that to people. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan is expected to present the 2018 national budget on November 27, 2017. Jordan had stated that there will be no new tax measures in the budget. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. On a brighter note, as climate change and hunting continues to affect the wildlife and their ecosystems in Guyana, the Wildlife Conservation and Management Commission is looking to put systems in place to protect them. It is against this backdrop that a second stakeholder consultation was held to develop regulations to guide the sustainable management of Guyana's wildlife resources. Here's the Shauna Gomes, Cornelius. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the consultation regarding regulations on hunting, trapping, protecting, conservation, management and sustainable use of wildlife, Minister of State Joseph Harmon revealed that it is important that Guyanese take the necessary measures to ensure that all wildlife and their respective ecosystems are protected and maintained. Minister Harmon, while reiterating President David Granger's vision of Guyana being a green state with a green economy, implored all stakeholders at the consultancy workshop to discuss issues affecting the wildlife trade, among others. As such, Minister Harmon encouraged all stakeholders to be the gatekeepers of their environment. Therefore, as you embark on this very important process of evaluating the proposals to be put forward by the legal consultant and the submissions of the Wildlife Scientific Committee along with your own proposals. I wish to suggest that you view our wildlife resources in its widest context and consider the following issues. One, the role of the sector in the context of the Green State Development Strategy. Two, the importance of wildlife to preservation of our ecosystem. Three, the future value of preserving our wildlife as we seek to expand the ecotourism sector and make our flora and fauna available to the world for scientific research. Four, Guyana's international obligations to institutions such as CITES. Five, the impact that the adopted regulations will have on the livelihood and culture of our indigenous peoples, as well as the hunters, trappers, middlemen, and the exporters. And six, the role that Guyana can and should be playing in protecting the flora and fauna of the Guyana Shield, which is under threat from human developmental activities. Director of Environment NDB Schwerz, during her delivery, touched on some of the key components integral to wildlife conservation in Guyana. Schwerz explained that with the onset of climate change and its effects on the environment and wildlife, consultations such as the one being hosted is necessary. With the onset of climate change and more human activities in wildlife areas, these consultations are not only necessary, but represent a critical step in the process for all stakeholders to take action to ensure the sustainability of these resources 
in light of their broader contribution to the well-being of not only the country but of its people. The consultation is being hosted by the Wildlife Conservation and Management Commission. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. That's a wrap for MTV's News Updates We Can Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us Monday, November 6 at 7 hours 30 for another edition of MTV's News Update. On behalf of our news team, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching.